Hello scouts, it's Mr. Kugler and we're going to do another type of backpack baking. Today we're going to use a manufactured, professionally manufactured backpacking oven. And this is the Bemco. This is the largest backpacking oven they make. This is just under or just around three pounds. I think it's just under three pounds, a couple ounces shy of that. And this is the nine inch. They make an eight inch which is just under two pounds. Uh, and uh, then they make a seven inch, which is a little lighter than that. Uh, it's about a pound and a half, pound and three quarters. Uh, but it's available, Benco is the, the brand name. And I'll show you right now how to put that together. And then we'll get into one of the items that I wanna teach you how to bake today, which is some pizza. And we'll talk about some ways to do that while we're backpacking. So the Bemco oven, it comes with this nice little Velcro strap, lid, it's got a couple racks. The diffuser is very important because the diffuser deflects the heat so it's not directly on the bottom. It also comes with a thermometer so that you can regulate uh, and control the temperature within the oven. It packs differently, it stores differently than it would if you were um, using it. So I'll show you how that works right now. So in this back corner over here, there's a hole. It's not where it stores when, it, when you're packing it, but there's a hole and there's a wing nut that you use to fasten the thermometer in place. And certainly you want to try to get it so that the readings are, so that you can read them so they're right side up. And then what I'm going to do is the diffuser plate is going to go, and it only goes one way, it goes on the bottom, there's some little nubs that stick out, and then these racks sit on the upper two set of racks, or of pins, uh, to be able to hold it. I should note that the space underneath is where our backpacking stove is going to fit and provide the heat that we need to be able to bake within this oven. Notice that the fuel tank for this stove is not attached directly to the bottom of the stove. That would create a problem with the heat buildup in here. It needs to have a hose and have the fuel source separate from the oven. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and line up the holes with those little pins that stick out. And then this will fit there, and I'll drop this for a moment. And the lid here, which has a opening to help regulate the temperature, fits directly on the top here. And it, you can see how it has it, it weaves around through there. There's a couple little indentations in the side here. When the front comes up, there's a little latch that comes down, and you're ready to bake. Uh, when what we're going to be doing today for our pizzas is we will be using a pizza screen. These are aluminum, very lightweight. The uh, mesh helps give the bottom of the pizza a nice crispy crust. And we'll be putting those. These are in our Bemco 9-inch oven. We're going to be using 8-inch pizza screens uh, to be able to fit in here. And then we'll be able to close it and set it up like that. So I'm going to move this out of the way for a second. And I'm going to talk about what we're going to use for ingredients. One of the most obvious challenges that we face when we backpack is weight. We have to worry about weight and trying to reduce that weight. One of the ways that we do that is to try to minimize the amount of water that we're carrying and instead get that water when we're at our campsite uh, through water filtration or maybe there's a water supply so we're not carrying that weight. So one of the ways we could resolve that is to carry this just add water pizza crust mix. Uh, so just add hot water to it and you'll be able to get at least two of these eight inch rounds out of this packet. Now this still has a little bit of weight to it. This is probably close to six and a half, seven, eight ounces of weight. Well, we could also carry dough, um, especially if we were gonna be cooking in the first night. It doesn't need to be refrigerated, which is another challenge that we have when we go backpacking. Actually, Pizza dough, if you allow it to sit for a period of time and relax, is actually easier to work. 
So you may find that you're really not adding that much water and it may be easier just to bring pizza dough that you bought at the grocery store. This is one third of a pound of pizza dough that I sectioned out and put in a separate bag. You could do this with uh, the amount of pizza so that you have it prepackaged ahead of time, labeled, uh, and you made the mess at home measuring it out and breaking it down into the different packages and packaging it up. One of the things that you want to do regardless is bring a little extra flour. Why do we need extra flour? Well, you get that dough when you start working it. It's, it helps to have a little bit of dough on your hands or on the surface that you're going to work the dough. So this is probably about a half a cup of flour that I packaged up. Now, where am I going to work the dough? If I push it too much into the screen, I, I run the risk of embedding it in that screen and making a mess. This is a cutting board that I've had around uh, for quite a while. I actually cut it in half to make two flexible cutting boards uh, that I use uh, when I travel, where I want something lightweight, but I don't need the whole big uh, cutting board to be able to use. So this would be a good solution for preparing our dough. One of the other challenges we have is to be able to coat this so that the piece of pizza dough does not stick or burn onto the grate. It'll make a mess for cleaning up. So what I have here, although uh, my hands are a little oily from this outside of this package, uh, so the name's gotten rid, uh, rubbed off on the outside, but this is a piece of paper towel folded up and I poured into the bag some vegetable oil to saturate that paper towel. What that does is it gives me a oil saturated towel that I could wipe on the surface to grease the surface without having to worry about the extra weight of carrying a spray can of oil of which I will not use the whole amount and it'll just be extra weight that I'm carrying and also I run the risk of that lid coming off and it makes a mess when if there's something pressing up against that and the last thing you want to do is have a can of non -sprick, a can of non-stick oil if I could say that correctly, spraying inside your backpack as you're hiking. Uh, so that's important. So what are we going to do for some toppings? We mentioned that refrigeration is an issue. Now, I happen to have a cooler because uh, I have some cheese in here I'll show you in a second. And I have an open package of uh, pepperoni. But this open package of pepperoni, before it was opened, it was stored at room temperature. So this does not need to be refrigerated and you can carry this. And certainly uh, this is, I believe, uh, a half a pound. You probably are not gonna use a half a pound of pepperoni, but makes a great snack uh, in addition to your pizza. So this is a good solution to get some protein on your pizza. Another solution is there's a lot of great proteins and meats that are coming in these packets that we used to see tuna fish packed in primarily and now we started seeing chicken. This is actually a bold buffalo style chicken and with the buffalo chicken it has a sauce already in with it. Now if we find that we want a little extra sauce um, we can actually add a little olive oil to that if we want to. I have packaged some olive oil instead of carrying this big bottle of which I will not need and the caps really don't hold on hold or stay in place all that well on these. Uh, so I've got a little bottle that I bought uh, for backpacking. This one actually has a, a little squeeze hole there so we can, I don't even have to open it up. So that's a great tool. What are some of the other things I could put on my pizza? Well, for cheese, certainly I could freeze up some mozzarella cheese. Um, you know those lunch boxes that some of you may use going to school? that are just the light insulated bags. Um, you certainly could put some cheese frozen inside of one of those bags um, and pack that in your backpack and protect it, especially if you were the first night um, that you were gonna be backpacking, that you were going to be cooking this uh, pizza. So that's an option. But one of the other things that you find stored at room temperature until it's open is this Parmesan Romano grated cheese. And a lot of high-end restaurants with these fire-baked pizzas, that's what they're using on their pizza. They're just using this grated Parmesan 
Romano type cheese on top of it. And again, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. Uh, this is a three ounce package, so it's very lightweight uh, to be able to carry. So what are some other ways that uh, we can get uh, some toppings? Something that I'm interested in trying, I haven't tried this before, we'll try this today, is this is a jumbo squid, like calamari, and it's what, I, what I'm intrigued by is it's packed in oil, in olive oil. So not only do I have my protein within this can, now granted the can is a little extra weight, but within that can I not only have my protein, but I also have olive oil, which I'll be able to put on top of my pizza and create that sauce or uh, replace what you normally would have, say, a uh, tomato sauce. So that is uh, an option that I'm intrigued by. Another choice of protein, and I understand it's a can, so it, it brings with it some additional weight, is this can of minced clams. So the minced clams are going to be great with some olive oil and some of this uh, grated cheese. And we'll be able to coat that on. It does come with some water that we'll have to worry about. Quite honestly, I love the water that comes in these cans. It's almost like that uh, liquor that they call it when you uh, steam a clam. Uh, so you could even, if you're daring, drink that um, it, you know, soon after opening the can. Uh, but certainly there's a can that you have to carry out. Now, some of the other choices. This is an 8-ounce can of tomato sauce. I understand it's a can. Um, there's some squeeze bottles that you may have seen me use in other sessions that you can bring. Uh, this 8-ounce can is going to go far. This is going to do far more pizzas than you're likely to bake uh, backpacking. Um, but it's, a, it's an option. It's, it's, it's not a larger can. Another thing that you don't have to worry about refrigerating is these minced um, mushrooms. Uh, and it has a pull top that makes it easier opening. So these mushrooms can be another topping on top of it. And then certainly something that uh, doesn't need refrigeration is some cloves of garlic. And what I did is I just shucked the garlic. I put it in a Ziploc bag labeled. I don't have to worry about refrigerating this. I'll just have to mince it up on that cutting board before I put it on my pizza. Um, and that'll be a big hit. So... How am I going to open my cans? There are two different types of can openers here. These are military style can openers. The larger one is called a P51 and the smaller one is called a P38. And these had holes in them, drilled in them or fast fashioned in them. And the GIs or the army and other military would sometimes carry these right on a chain around their neck uh, because the rations that they got, uh, this was incredibly important to be able to get into their food as a can opener. Uh, so these are great to carry. Make sure you always put them someplace you'll find them because they're so small and light, which makes them great for backpacking, but they're also easy to lose. Uh, so those are important. I have a knife. This I got at a kitchen uh, gadget store and it comes with its own sheath. It's lightweight. This will be great when I'm cutting up the garlic uh, and working things. And I also have one of these aluminum sets of pliers or tongs that uh, are actually Boy Scout uh, type tongs are lightweight and great to use because we're going to have to maneuver those pizza screens around. And then I have a good pair of leather, good quality leather gloves that are lightweight not as heavy as my big Dutch oven gloves, and I can carry those in my backpack uh, when I'm backpacking uh, without having the additional weight of those larger uh, welder's gloves. So why don't we do this, we'll change the camera angles here in a second, and I'm gonna go and we'll set up our stove and have it ready uh, to be able to uh, get some pizzas in that oven. To set up our stove is pretty simple. And I showed you before our backpacking oven, this is pretty lightweight. Uh, and the importance of having the fuel canister separate um, from the bottom of the stove, unlike some of the ones where it screws right onto the tank. And I'm going to keep my, I want a stable surface, and I'm going to keep my fuel tank separate over here. And then you'll notice on the Bemco oven, 
that it has some of these little notches on the side. And what they do is they act as a way to be able to have a pathway for that hose to be able to fit. I'm going to take and close up the top opening there uh, to be able to uh, keep the heat inside my oven. And what I'll do is I'll go prepare my dough. We'll come back and we'll preheat this up to about 350, three and a quarter. We'll see how it goes. We could always bring it up. Normal baking temperature for a pizza is typically around 500, but we'll use a little caution. We'll go a little lighter uh, to prevent burning and we'll see how it goes and we can always increase the temperature. Reminder, there's a, a thermometer on the other side over here that we'll be able to watch to be able to control our temperature. So it's time to make our first pizza and I'm going to put on some of these gloves because these are great to have, especially when you're backpacking. Uh, when water isn't immediately available and trying to keep your hands clean can be a challenge. So I'm going to start by two things. I'm going to start with the oil, mm. vegetable oil soaked paper towel here. Pull this paper towel out. I'm going to take my top surface and I'm just going to take and give it a nice coating of that oil. Put this down here, put my vegetable oil laden paper towel away. And I will start and I'm going to mince up my garlic here before I make a mess on the cutting board. Start with one clove here. And actually what I'm going to do is I have two cutting boards, so I think what I'm going to do is take and keep this on this cutting board, put it off to the side here with my knife and my other garlic. And although I could go with the uh, package of pizza dough that you add water. For purposes today, um, I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to use some pizza dough that I had left over from cooking yesterday. And remember I mentioned that we had some flour. Take my flour and I'm going to coat top of my cutting board here a little bit. And also try to get a little bit on my hands. I'm going to reach in. And this dough has been sitting out for a couple hours to what's called proof. It causes it to relax a little bit and makes it a little bit easier to work. You'll try to be a little neater than me with the flour. So right now what I'm doing is my knuckles going into the dough. And then I'm just going to start working it. I'm going to let gravity do its, its thing and help it hang down. I'm not going to be overly worried about if it's perfectly round, although I'll shoot for that. I'll try not to make any holes in the dough. And that's why I want to be very gentle, especially with my fingers. A lot of times you'll see pizza guys using their knuckles and going in like that on the pizza dough. This is such a small, remember we're only going to have eight inches when we're done here. Um, so that's a little tough. I just had a little bit of a hole form there. I just went and got it fixed. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanted to as best as possible, try to stretch it out. Remember, this is about a third of a pound because I want to have the dough a little thin in the middle, especially, so that it will cook. I'm trying to push down on here, so I just want to make sure I didn't push it into that mesh. So I'm going to put this aside for a moment, and I'm going to make two of these pies right now. So the magic of YouTube, I'm going to go and magically prepare another circle of dough. So just like that, I've got two dough circles here ready to go uh, that'll fit in my Bemco oven. So let's get started. I'm going to, this just has some flour on the top. I'm going to get one of my military style can openers. 
This is my P38. Put a little olive oil. This bottle here with the little opening there is just such a breeze to be able to move that oil around and squirt it out. I would still put this in a bag in my backpack, a Ziploc bag, just in case. Let's go get some of this clam meat. Not a big deal if I get a little of the juices. I'm going to try not to get too many, but that'll be a little more flavor on there. So I did the best that I could to get as much of that clam meat out of there as possible. I'm going to set this aside over here without spilling it. And now what I'm going to do is just come over and put a little bit of garlic on top of this. And then we'll add our Parmesan Romano cheese here. Took the cap off. It's got a shaker. Now remember, this didn't need to be refrigerated up until opening, and even then it's got a little bit of a shelf life to it. We'll just liberally put that on our pizza. Okay, with that on, now we're going to take a step over here and we'll get our oven preheated so that we can uh, put our pizzas in and bake it. So now we'll light our stove. It's always important to read the manufacturer's instructions to make sure that you're operating it correctly. So now we'll put our oven over the top of our lit stove. My oven is just approaching 325 degrees. I want it to be around 350. So what I'm gonna do now, knowing that I'm gonna open the door, it's gonna let some heat out. I'm gonna put our pizzas in and then regulate the heat up to 350. Now I'll keep an eye and get it regulated at about 350 and about five minutes or so I'm going to swap the upper pizza to the lower rack and the lower pizza to the upper rack. About five minutes in I'm going to rotate my pizzas. been watching my temperatures and regulating the heat by adjusting the fuel supply. When it gets a little too hot, I can open up the top here as well. Well, that's going. We'll prep some of our other pizzas. And what did I forget? I put olive oil, and this actually came with olive oil that I could have used. It's 
So this is the squid. And we'll put some of that Parmesan Romano cheese on the top of this as well. Let's check on our pizzas that are in the oven. challenge is getting those tops cooked without the bottoms being too dark and I think the lower temperature in this is working out better than the higher temperature. So at about 15 minutes in or so our pizzas were getting done. I think the greatest challenge here and I shut off the oven because I wanted to be able to have the cameras rolling when I removed the pizzas and they would have been totally charred at that point if I had left it going obviously uh, so I shut it off. Uh, trying to regulate that temperature, especially switching from the top to the bottom, uh, because it has a tendency to be to burn a little hotter at the bottom than at the top. Uh, so uh, we've got our two clam pizzas. Uh, a little challenging keeping the bottoms uh, going uh, while well, the tops were. And these are cooled down a little bit, but that is a that is a pretty pie right there, and you can see the other one. I'm just going to pull the whole grate out right now to be able to get it out. Obviously, if you were working this, you'd be working from the front of the camera, not uh, or front of the oven, not the back, uh, to be able to get a camera shot. But these are our two clam pizzas. Uh, we're going to go put our calamari pizzas in and uh, have some fun baking up a couple pies here, and we'll show you what the finished product looks like. Well, scouts. I'm running out of daylight, so uh, there's two more pepperoni and cheese pizzas in there. You're going to have to trust me on it. I've got my clam pizza, my squid pizza. Both these have both garlic, olive oil, and the uh, grated Parmesan Romano cheese on them. Uh, the ones, the pepperoni ones I have in the oven here are uh, some of that grated cheese, or excuse me, shredded cheese that you could have brought with you frozen and a little bit of that tomato sauce and uh, some pepperoni on top. They're looking great. Uh, one of the tricks that I found in working through this and trying to deal with each stove is a little different in terms of its regulation, so you, regulating the heat. So you want to get something that's easy to regulate. I picked a butane because it burns cleaner. I get a little nervous with some of the ones that use the white gas because uh, they sometimes have a little bit of soot on the outside and certainly I don't want my pizzas tasting like that. So I've been using the butane. I'm on the second two pizzas with the same can which was not a full can when I started. Uh, but uh, these are coming out great. Uh, what I did do on the bottom shelf is I took a pizza pan which was the same diameter as my pizza screen. I put it upright because it has a little curve to it and that kept the pizza up a little bit and that's protecting the bottoms uh, where the bottoms were cooking a little bit uh, better. So great opportunity. The squid pizza that came with its own oil that you could use on the topping. The clam uh, pizza that had the clam minced clam meat and that canned uh, with the uh, bolt with the grated uh, cheese. A uh, little bit of garlic there. Great meal. Uh, probably one per scout. They do take a little longer, but let's think about it. When we're backpacking, we typically have a lot of time when we're camping uh, after our hike. Uh, so it's, it's a different kind of backpacking meal. It beats those dehydrated things, I guarantee you. Think about opportunities when you're backpacking to keep up with those advancement on your cooking methods and skills. Get out there, have fun with your troop, have fun with your patrol, and think about great things that you could do camping and cooking. Little bonus footage for you scouts. Uh, those pepperoni pizzas came out unbelievable. Uh, I did get some daylight. Uh, look at how crisp they came up on the, on the edges there, but the bottoms are unbelievable. Look at that pepperoni pizza. 
swapped them around, and here's the other one. That one even looks better, doesn't it? Unbelievable.